In our next segment, we show you how Santa Barbara residents can contribute to the health of our creeks and ocean. Neonicotinoids are insecticides present in many widely used pest control products. Their chemical structure resembles that of nicotine and kills or harms insects by binding with receptors in their brains. Hundreds of products contain neonicotinoids, such as pest control, agricultural, landscaping, gardening, and flea and tick treatments. Neonics are extremely harmful to bee populations. However, their long-term environmental effects in different ecosystems have not been thoroughly researched. Their water solubility makes application easier, but introduces chemicals into bodies of water anytime there is a storm or runoff. This is the focus of research being done by the Creeks Division and UCSB with the NOAA Sea Grant, which is a federal university partnership that allowed for this collaboration. USGS is also assisting with the project. Our responsibility under the Sea Grant um, scenario is to provide them with the information that they, they can use in, around the country and around the globe, and we can help in that process by publishing our work in scientific journals such that they're broadly distributed within the scientific and management communities so that they can understand our results uh, and learn from them. The Creeks Division's water samples are analyzed by USGS for neonics. The Bren School and Lenahan prepare toxicity reports using information from the storm samples. Their goal is to introduce a factual basis and support for regulations. The research allows us to understand the extent of the risk neonics pose to the environment and what measures need to be taken. We've really learned about the neonics that it's not the three-hour concentration that we're concerned about. It's the, the, the long-term, low-level concentrations. And so I really think that that's a problem for our entire city. And not just our city, but the entire world is grappling with this. Little research has been done on neonics in aquatic environments. The imperviousness of paved surfaces creates a higher risk of contamination in urban watersheds that collect runoff in larger bodies of water, such as lagoons. Neonics can find their way into water through several routes, especially when the insecticide is widely used and in high concentrations. The more it is used as a pesticide, the more harm comes to the environment, especially when those toxicity levels are combined with other pollutants. Other common metropolitan contaminants, such as copper, mix with the neonics, creating more toxicity for organisms. The grant looks at the bigger picture related to neonics. We find that that uh, cocktail of contaminants is extremely toxic to uh, stream and estuarine organisms. So by themselves, those low levels can have um, some biological effects. When you add them together, there's a synergistic effect they interact and have a much more profound negative effect than they would um, the contaminants exposed to the animals by themselves. The best way to prevent environmental harm is to stop using non-organic pesticides. If it is necessary to use pesticides, they should be used in small, targeted doses. However, there are also organic options and fertilizer. The desire for data like that gathered through the Sea Grant Project shows the importance of understanding the human impact on the environment and preventing new chemicals and pollutants, like neonics, from creating irreversible harm to the earth. There are other issues with habitat destruction, there's light pollution, uh, climate change, there are other problems, but I do know if we continue to use these pesticides at this rate that we are going to contribute to more rapid declines of insects and that's not something that we want. Ecosystems have a fragile balance that is thrown off by changes in the environment. Neonics and other pollutants that can travel miles into different ecosystems present risks to species and their food webs. For species to maintain their current state, their habitats need to be preserved and contaminants like neonics shouldn't be introduced. The grant research has found the presence of neonics in water far from places with neonic usage. Neonics can travel long distances when dissolved in water and gathered in wind-blown dust. We're getting this um, low-level pollution really for weeks after each storm. And when you think about 
how often storms come, that means that some of these aquatic insects and our estuarine organisms are really exposed to these neonics our entire rainy season. And that's very concerning. The research done through NOAA's Sea Grant takes a comprehensive approach to find out the effects of low levels of neonics that are continuously present in different aquatic ecosystems. The Bren School uses models to project long-term effects which have proven the harm that comes to organisms and their entire food webs. The concentrations slow down organisms such as crustaceans, making them easier prey and less likely to catch their own food, while also decreasing reproduction and population. Combined with other pollutants, the negative effects become substantial. I know of no other city besides Santa Barbara that has put together an, a program like this. The city did a great job of putting together an interdisciplinary group that's utilizing some of the most cutting edge science and quantitative tools to understand the impact of the neonics. There is a never ending desire to rid plants of insects by making them toxic with new systemic pesticides. But in doing so, there must be consideration of the consequences other organisms, the good bugs, will face as a result. This grant project also shows that some of the good bugs in Santa Barbara creeks have begun to decline. Santa Barbara residents can play their part in reducing the effects of neonics by educating themselves and others on organic gardening techniques and less toxic products. Check the active ingredients to see if they include any of the following listed on the screen. If you do have to use a pesticide, check the label to see how to use the product safely. For more information on pesticide alternatives, visit the Our Water, Our World program's website at ourwaterourworld.org.